have our first guest on the line already, bright and early, yes. Brendan Watkins. Good morning, Brendan. Good morning. How now, you Brendan, going? you're the CEO of SPASA Victoria. Now, everybody knows what SPASA stands, so you better uh, explain what it stands for and then why we're going to have a chat to you because I think what we're going to have a chat is one of the most important things that just gets brushed over. Very good, yes. Uh, SPASA stands for the Swimming Pool and Spa Association of Victoria. Uh, we look after all of the pool builders and pool shops and suppliers to the industry in Victoria. Um, would you like me to go yes, on? Yes, keep tell going. You, uh, a, a little about uh, our thoughts about the recent announcement from government about uh, introducing uh, swimming lessons for primary school uh, children, which uh, in the general sense the association very much is supportive of. We do have a question, as I think many uh, in the education field have questioned where the funding comes from. So the announcement is that um, children have to swim in primary school 50 metres before they can graduate, um, but no announcement of additional funding. Our issue, our concern, is essentially the toddlers. Um, supportive of the, the fact that everybody needs to be able to, sw- to swim, but we do have a concern that the toddlers, those that are the most vulnerable and most at risk, um, aren't being adequately protected. Um, the association's position is that our view is that we believe that all pool fences need to be maintained by pool owners, and that is currently the law. Uh, and we do hear anecdotally, day in, day out, from our members that are out in the field looking at pools all day, um, that a vast number probably the majority, aren't compliant to the current legislation. Um, there's been some recent uh, disclosures made by Leader Press that have done an investigation of a whole range of councils throughout Victoria and um, they've made uh, mandatory inspections of pools within their municipality and found that a majority have failed. We've found that the Stonington Council uh, did 60 inspections of pools and not one were compliant. Whitehorse Council did 100 inspections of pools, again, zero compliance. Whittlesea, 49 pools were inspected, only five were proven to be safe. Yarra Ranges, 61 pools, nine were proven to be safe. We acknowledge that it may well be that minor failures have occurred in these sorts of alarming uh, results, but nonetheless, the most significant uh, considerations of gates and latches and uh, the, the entryways into the pools very often are the first elements to fail in pool fences. So in a nutshell, our position is, number one, we ask the government to immediately introduce legislation to ensure that every property that has a pool or spa is inspected and given a certificate of compliance before the Section 32, the sale or the lease occurs, um, because that's not the case in Victoria, even though many people think it is that you... That you, you can't sell a house with a pool that doesn't have a compliant barrier. The fact is, you can. And our second position is that we very much uh, in, are in favour of three yearly barrier checks. So every pool, its fence is checked uh, once every three years and given the sign-off by uh, a building surveyor. That is the case in Queensland, New South Wales and Western Australia. Uh, and the, the longest-running... Uh, mandatory barrier policy that's been in place in Australia is Western Australia, and their experience proves that fatalities have decreased by 80%. So mm-hmm. it works. That's our position. We're very strongly of the position that it's about people maintaining the pool fences. Pools are fantastic additions to life, uh, people's lifestyle, the social capital that they uh, bring to communities and to families. They're fantastic things, but we are very concerned that many pool fences aren't safe and we want kids to enjoy pools safely. We do, Brendan, and uh, if you've ever had any child that's had a near slip, not had to be fatal, but uh, a near miss, you just realise that what it's got to be. Um, <clears throat> things are put up and the oh, sometimes it's not the gate, Sometimes it's not the mm-hmm. gate, uh, but sometimes it is. Sometimes they can get over some a bit of rockery around the back and climb up and somehow get across an unbelievable bit and jump over the fence mm-hmm. because kids can see as a challenge of getting in or doing what they're not supposed to do. 
Um, yep. But all those and, and things. Very often, just a barbecue against <clears throat> the fence is all it takes. Yes, a barbecue pushed up there for the reason of getting it further away from the entertaining area where the barbecue is. And once once it's cold, uh, you can climb up on a barbecue. That's right. That's right. And there there have been, you know, unfortunately, I have read um, coronial reports on on this very topic, and um, I, I can't recall reading one. Uh, where there's been uh, an issue with a pool where the barrier has been compliant. Um, the pool barrier legislation's been devised to protect only toddlers, so the zero to five-year-olds. Um, that's when they're most at risk. That's when they need our protection. Um, have a pool. It's a great thing to add to your family life. Uh, but the barrier must, must, must be maintained that this latest... Really, it's a revelation from the leader press is that the vast majority of barriers out there aren't compliant. <clears throat> it's an easy fix. The other states are uh, seeing the logic, the empirical evidence exists that checking the barriers saves lives. We really think the government needs to take another step forward. And in the very least, in the very least, at Section 32, a new lease of property, you shouldn't be allowed to sell your property or have a lease where there's a pool or spa unless it's proven to be safe. Well, how do we get these going, Brendan? How do we get the inspectors and how do how do we get these things going so that that, that does happen? At least the sale of the property, it's got to be correct. Or how do we get the legislation in or whatever it's got to be that every three years or every five, whatever we, we decide on, that they're going mm. to be checked? Mm. Where do we get the money from and where do, where do we get the bureaucracy to run it? Well, look, it's it's just a piece of legislation. We're on uh, a campaign for this very thing right now. So uh, it's why we're doing media releases. It's why we're writing to government. I think uh, there is a, a groundswell of activity at the moment, in particular with this recent release of information with regard to the investigation into pools and fences and safety. Um, what we're saying is let's not wait until someone's hurt uh, it's usually when legislation is created. Let's wait. Uh, let's act now. Let's be proactive and get out there and do something uh, now that we have some evidence. Uh, we do know that mandatory barrier inspections work. 80% reduction in fatalities. It's a fantastic outcome. And, and let's not forget, if it's not someone drowning in a pool... God forbid, but there's also um, non-fatal drownings where uh, children are resuscitated and there are brain damage, there are injuries, mm. there are life-changing uh, repercussions to the child and their family for many years to come, even though they've survived the, the drowning. So there is a solution. We know what it is. Um, there's a process that we need to go through. Um, the other states have a blueprint uh, that we can model from. The first thing we need to do is establish a register of pools and spas in, in the state. So uh, the reality is no one knows how many pools and spas there are in the state. Uh, the last, as far as I'm aware, the last um, official collection of that data was the 2009 census. There's a little over 100,000 pools in Victoria, or there was then. We're adding to the stock, stock by roughly 10,000 units a year. And there's um, some pools and spas that are then being filled in or reducing the stock, but undoubtedly it's increasing. We might be somewhere between, my estimate would be 120, 150,000 pools, but we don't know where they are. So the first thing that all the other states have done is um, sat down and, well, New South Wales is the most recent adopter of this program, Mandatory Barrier Inspections, and they've had a, a website dedicated to the voluntary disclosure of um, a pool or, or a spa in the state. So uh, homeowners have had to go online and log their pool or spa and commit to the program. And they've uh, done that over a couple of years, collected the data, found out where the pools and spas are, have a register. Um, the second step is to create a, an inspector's course. So there's an, uh, a standalone pool barrier inspector course so that all sorts of people can get that qualification um, and uh, and get the adequate insurance, and then they can be the people responsible for doing the inspections. At the moment, building surveyors are licensed and registered to do that work. Um, the notion that I just explained a little while ago of um, the, the, uh, the collection of the data of finding out where the pools are and developing the course, 
in the other couple of states that have taken this on in the last five years, New South and Queensland, it's taken as much as five years to get the program up and running, which is why we're calling for the immediate introduction of legislation that says for sale of property and lease of those two factors um, that there's mandatory barrier inspections at that stage. And by the time we get to the four or five years of working out where the pools are, having the corps to do the inspections and getting the program rolling, at least we're dealing with a number of the pools in the market that are, that are changing hands. Well, Brendan, I wish you all the best with this because um, it, and someone in your local town, whatever it happens to be, uh, mm. has uh, either a death or uh, a life-changing uh, brain damage to the child and every, everybody in that village or the town says, we've got to do something. But until it affects them in that town, it's just, well, they just don't worry about it. It's happened somewhere else. It really wasn't us and obviously they didn't have a pool fence or they didn't have whatever it was. I wish you all the best with this. And um, as you. we have... Um, uh, different uh, politicians come on this show over the time, um, state and federal. Uh, we will uh, just ask them off air for a start. Uh, what what are yeah. they doing and, and what's their uh, position on this? Because uh, as we uh, we need to just pressure everybody that we can. Exactly right. Exactly right. Look, uh, you know, I think it will only come from a groundswell of industry like ourselves and consumers at the end of the day, voters, people talking to their local member, people talking to the state politicians, people sending emails. What we're saying is we want government to be proactive. Let's not respond to someone getting hurt. Um, we do have, on average, a couple of fatalities of toddlers every year in Victoria. We're saying let's get on the front foot, get it right, get the system in place, get more pools in the ground, enjoy the pools, but people have to maintain the barriers. We've got a system that's available. It's working in the other states, and we strongly urge the government to consider this. Well, we thank you, Brendan, and we wish you all the best with it because um, we know out there somebody knows somebody that had a near near fatality or a near injury, and uh, we, just look, we look forward to uh, all your results, and when it happens, we'll go, hey, we talked to that black... <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look, I, I thank yeah, I thank the two of you, Ron and Rob, for uh, the opportunity to uh, to put our view across and to um, and and uh, consider it. Um, I, I thank you very much for your time.